I have some news for you. I've got something new coming out really quick, so stay tuned to the end of this video to find out about the Galantian mini bodybuilding courses. Coming soon. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to your Natural Land Bodybuilding, and today I want to talk to you about a very good concept, a very awesome concept, something that is, well, just came to me right now. And this is, should you start with isolation movements instead of compound movements for hypertrophy reasons? This is a very valid thing to talk about, okay? Because a lot of us are trying to power build, we're trying to gain strength, but at the same time we're trying to gain muscle. And let's just face it, becoming a perfectionist or specialist in one exercise, there's a lot of factors that go into that when it comes down to building strength. So say you're bench pressing, a lot of it's gonna be groove or you're squatting, a lot of it's your groove. It's not necessarily just contractile ability of the muscle. A lot of it's actually coordination. So. That's why when we refine our strength levels, we can handle heavier weights and everything, but a lot of it comes from coordination. It's not just the muscles that get stronger, although that is part of it as well, okay? So during the hypertrophy stage, and if you're a bodybuilder, if you're a natural bodybuilder and you're looking at changing the physique first and foremost as your priority, that's really bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is saying, my physique is the first and foremost thing that I wanna change. How much I can lift is important, but it's not really important for me to be strong in the big three. Maybe I wanna be strong in flies more so than strong in, in bench presses or whatever, right? I'm just talking, generally speaking, I don't agree with doing one rep maxes, obviously on isolation movements, but that's a different subject. But anyway, the bottom line is, one could argue that doing isolation movements first on the weak muscle group before you do the compounds would be a great idea or a great strategy or probably one of the most important strategies you could incorporate. And it's something I'm guilty of not doing and I've done it from time to time and I'm actually thinking maybe I should be doing it more often. Uh, case in point, my chest doing flies, the cable flies and the machine flies, as you guys might have noticed, I've actually put on a little bit of muscle mass in my chest because I'm able to fire that chest more so with that exercise than say my, my compound lifts. Because of my shoulder injury and because of laxity in the joint, because of the, the hockey injuries that I got, what happens is my shoulders take over quite a bit with most of the lifts. So it only stands to reason that if I can find a way to hit fatigue or muscular fatigue in the chest first and foremost, and then go to the compounds, perhaps I'm going to be able to bring up that chest faster which is probably something I should be doing more often. So I think I will be doing that. I'm gonna try that out. Now, another way that you could do this, say you find that your quadriceps are weak and you are one of those people, okay? I'm not one of them, but you're one of those people that leg extensions really work well for and they don't bug your knees at all and your knees are fine and everything like that. You might think about doing leg extensions to failure first and then going into your squat workout and then see how your legs feel. Cause I'm gonna tell you, your legs are gonna be on fire, right? Th those quadriceps are gonna get built up pretty good. So basically what you're doing is that you're making sure that the muscle that you hit is hitting failure. You're not leaving it to chance. So when you're going to do a compound lift such as squats, hamstrings come into play, glutes come into play, quadriceps come into play, lower back comes into play, your core comes into play. A lot of muscles come into play, but when you do the isolations first for the quadricep, like the leg extensions, and then you go to do squats, I guarantee you, it doesn't matter what's going on, your quadriceps are gonna hit failure long before anything else does, and therefore you are causing the quadricep to adapt more so, right? So again, don't break your own rules when it comes down exercises that don't work for you just to apply this principle because you won't see me doing leg extensions anytime soon because I find leg extensions are not necessarily good for my knees. But if there is a circumstance where you feel you're weak and you could apply this principle, it might be the right thing for you to do. Another case in point is if you have small delts, if your delts are underdeveloped or your rear delts are underdeveloped or your side delts are underdeveloped, why are you shoulder pressing first? Right? During your hypertrophy stages, you should be doing lateral raises or rear delts or rotator cuff and then going into pressing after all of those other basics are done. So once you fatigue the crap of the delts with the lateral raises and then the rear delts, then you go into shoulder press. This is what I did all the time. I always did this just because I found if I went into shoulder press first, I hit the front delt. First of all, I'm hitting the front delt all the time when it comes down to bench pressing. My front delt was already getting hit during bench presses, uh, flat, inclines, declines, whatever. I was already getting a lot of front delt work. So why would I prioritize the front delts during shoulder pressing? Now, if your primary goal is just one rep maxes with shoulder presses or one rep maxes with your bench press, maybe you could argue and say, hey, I want to start with pressing because I just want to get good at pressing. But if bodybuilding is your first and foremost goal, if the look of your physique is the first and foremost goal, then you should probably be concentrating on the skinny little rear delts that you got going on instead of those monster front delts, right? You want to prioritize the stuff that's weak. So a way you could also apply this when it comes down to back training, and this is something that I think a lot more people should do, is do 
cable pullovers or dumbbell pullovers first and then work their way into doing lat pull downs because that would force them to learn how to fire those lats instead of them just pulling with the biceps or the shoulders and like you see like you always see me when i do pull ups or when i do pull downs I lean back and stick that chest out, right? I retract the shoulder blades. But most of the people you see do lat pull downs or chin ups, what they do is they do this and then they rotate over the bar. So they're not even engaging their back for the most part. They're engaging their rear delts, they're engaging their biceps, and they're engaging their internal rotator muscles, right? The muscles that are internally rotating, the teres major. I think it's the teres major. Anyway, but not necessarily the belly of the lat, the lat that really builds that meat that we know with the lat spread. I'm doing a lat spread right now. Look, you can't see it on camera, but it's really huge. It's massive mountain. So another way this could be applied to is say somebody did want to work the biceps by doing back training. Well, yeah, train those biceps first and then go into your pull-ups with your reverse grip or whatever grip you want to use. But reverse grip would probably be the best for the bicep brachii. And then you would do those pull-ups to failure, but you would be ensuring that your biceps would hit fatigue far faster than your back because they're already fatigued from all that bicep training you did. So these are things you can apply in your program. So I guess the basic message I'm saying in this video is to find out what is your main priority because and it's okay for you to change that main priority from time to time, but it's good for you to say, okay, this is my main priority for this month or the next two months. And the reason why I'm saying this is a good thing is because you can create these little goals for yourself and therefore really ignite that fire of passion and enthusiasm around your training. So it's not always like just Groundhog Day where you're coming in the gym and okay, here, I gotta do the same thing again, I have to do this. No, make these mini goals that might be outside your comfort zone from time to time. And you'll find that you'll have a lot more motivation for your training and it'll be a lot more fun, right? Because you know, in in the end right the, the gym is just a petri dish of life and you're just basically having some fun and finding out what the laws of cause and effect are when it comes down to training so anyway i hope this helps motivate you with your training i hope this gives you a new perspective on maybe some things to incorporate in your training and i got some news for you so those of you who aren't on patreon who don't know I am designing the Galantian bodybuilding courses and they will be available at naturalgalantbodybuilding.com. The first course I'm starting with is the chest. So it's an in-depth video that's approximately 50 minutes to an hour long on chest training and the ins and outs of chest training and the different details around it, different exercises and what you should do and why you should do it and what not to do and you know that sort of thing. Now I'm going to be doing courses on every single body part that I train and they're going to be in-depth videos on this so they're all going to be available on naturalgalantbodybuilding.com so make sure you check them out. Oh,